After some heated drama in the narrative department entering Game 5, which we'll get to, the Warriors took control of this one from the jump, as the reigning champion dubs, fueled by a monster first quarter from Draymond, seven first quarter threes as a team, and Stephen Curry being more relentless on both ends of the court than we've seen throughout the course of what's turning into an all-time great battle between he and LeBron's Lakers, led the way. Wiggins finally made his presence felt and was his 2022 finals-esque self. Jordan Poole was proving salty doubters across the globe dead wrong with the killer mentality he proved to have back at Michigan and throughout his four years in the association, maybe proving to Kerr he deserves more playing time. JP can still be more efficient, but he is playing on half a foot and his 11 points were impactful. Additionally, Gary Payton II was more active than he's ever been in these playoffs at Game 5, tapping out critical O boards, being the versatilely quick role man that he's paid to be, equating to the young glove being a game best plus 25. Stay tuned for how the dubs just swung momentum and kept their dynasty alive when many were counting them out. Before that, just 12.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. In the first half, the Warriors turned eight Laker turnovers into a clean 16 points, and on the Lakers' very first possession of half number two, the Dubs would force another turnover and make it 18 points off LA giveaways. In terms of to end the opening 24 minutes, the trend of this being a series of runs would progress. Tied at 54 with four and a half left in the opening half, the Dubs would go on a 16 to five run to close the second frame, Momentum capped off by a stage lighting Curry buzzer beating three to end the first half to exact just a little bit of revenge on Lonnie Walker for what IV did to him in the fourth quarter back at the Crypto in game four. The Curry bomb would put the dubs up 11 and provided them with serious momentum entering the locker room, a surge in which they ultimately wouldn't look back from because while the Lakers did have several counter punches, they ultimately couldn't take care of the Rock consistently enough and properly deal with the deterrence of the Warriors' on-ball pressure and engaged activity. The Warriors would make it 20 points off Laker turnovers a few minutes into the third quarter in what was turning into a merciless rout on Warrior ground. Give credit to the banged-up Lakers for staying in it, but you could tell Steph's shot-creating gravity and mental fortitude was relentless from the jump in terms of trying to shift the narrative back in his team's favor, of course also an attempt to keep the hopes of Dub Nation alive. To his credit, the greatest three-point marksman of all time by far, in addition to the greatest point guard ever, was the most beastly version of himself that we've seen in a while. His downhill drives were explosive and anything but hesitant. He was beating LeBron and AD to the punch more effectively than he has all series. Steph didn't attempt a single free throw in Game 5, but making exactly half of his 24 field goals, he racked up a pretty efficient 27-piece in what's been a stellar last couple games for the future Hall of Famer, despite some missed clutch shots at the end of Game 4. Steph would take a lot of flack for those missed shots, by the way. But after we looked at how Lonnie Walker exposed him off the dribble in that game, Evidently, Steph took that personally and played shockingly great defense in this one. You'll see the footage matched up in tomorrow's film breakdown of the dub's best plays, but there was a possession where he put a body in front of LeBron to stop his drive without flopping for the charge. Truly a rarity in today's flop-heavy modern NBA. Curry also had a critical steal to swing momentum, which we'll also look at tomorrow. Meanwhile, Draymond's impact on this one was prominent. Man stuffed the stat sheet with 20 points, 10 boards, 4 dimes, 2 steals, and a block. He was consistently penetrating the lane after utilizing that patented, ever so effective fake dribble handoff. He was trash talking like his usual self from the jump to buy some Laker real estate. He was hitting timely jump shots to space the floor throughout the entirety of the game, including a clutch midi to seal it. Draymond must bring that same energy and focus into Game 6 if the Road Warriors will have a shot at dethroning King James for a second consecutive outing. Dre's evidently at his best between the lines when his intensity is nurtured into a healthy yet determined combination of anger and aggressiveness. 
His intimidation factor and peskiness was one of the driving forces in this Warriors W. As the second half progressed, while the Lakers were settling for less than ideal looks from the mid-range, the Warriors relentlessly pushing it up in transition wore down a Laker team that by the end of Game 5 seemed extremely beat down. Whether it was AD being forced to leave with a concussion, which we'll get to later on, being wheelchaired to the locker room, LeBron aggravating his already partially torn tendon in his foot, or Lonnie Walker getting shook up near the end. The question marks on the injury front will certainly loom heavily in the brains of Laker fans as we approach a pivotal Game 6 back in Hollywood. Before touching on that upcoming outing, TNT's Chris Haynes spoke on the Lakers' response to the Warriors' complaints about the officiating entering this Game 5. The full report from Haynes read, quote, Steve Kerr said that the Lakers are getting away with flopping and that they're fooling the refs. He's encouraging the refs to look deeper into that and not fall for it. I had to get the Lakers' perspective about how they feel about Steve Kerr calling gamesmanship at this point. I texted a prominent Lakers player. This was his response. Let them bitch and complain. It shows weakness and frustration. We can't get caught up in that game. We just have to play and keep fighting." End quote. As I often say, both sides can claim that it's rigged when things don't go their way, which ultimately comes down to the heavy emotions that the NBA can inflict on the most passionate of fans. Fact of the matter is, the Lakers were the more aggressive team in the games that they got the benefit of the doubt in terms of the whistle, and in games like this one, the Warriors were the more aggressive team, and they received the better whistle. Whoever focuses on that narrative, however, will have to operate with a limp, because now, it's back to LA for Game 6 on Friday night, where the Lakers are 5-0 at home this postseason, and in general, have won 8 consecutive games at the Crypto since losing to the Bulls back on March 26th. Biggest concern if you're a Laker fan, though, is obviously the health of Anthony Davis. AD had it going offensively early, but even before getting hurt, he quite frankly disappeared down the stretch. Then, of course, he'd suffer a nasty, inadvertent elbow to the side of the skull from Kevon Looney. Davis would initially just go to the bench, then he would go to the locker room with six minutes left. I get it was a bad hit to the head, but as a man who took a Jorge Masvidal knee to the head playing flag football back in elementary at 200 miles an hour, plus with what Draymond suffered a game prior, banging his head down on the court at full velocity, not to mention a man nearly a decade older than him in LeBron fighting through a torn tendon in his foot. I would have liked to see AD attempt to stick it out in such a close game in the late fourth quarter. Then again, maybe the severity is worse than I'm making it out to be. And if that's the case, and he could potentially miss game six at home, the Lakers season, despite being up 3-2 in this series and being up 3-1 at one point, could legitimately be in jeopardy. But this is the playoffs, and from an impartial fan's perspective, there's no room for biases or feelings. One team's injury is another team's blessing, quite frankly. And right now, going back to the Crip, after a monster performance from my fellow Torontonian and Wiggs, an electrically active game from GP2, a rarely elite offensive performance from Dre, a masterclass from Steph, despite this being an off night for Clay, the dubs took a dramatic W. You'll likely see his podcast after this one, but I'll leave you with Draymond's reaction directly after getting it done in the tunnel. Good one, huh? We did our job here. Gotta run it back now. All right, all right, all right. 